So when you think of Nuxt, you probably think of server-side rendering or what's now called universal rendering, as this is one of the key reasons why Nuxt was created. Now when you use Nuxt, you may think that you're locked into serving your application solely on the server side, however, you actually have the ability to run your whole Nuxt application fully on the client like a traditional view app, or you can opt for something called hybrid rendering. What hybrid rendering allows you to do is utilize both universal and client-side rendering within your Nuxt application simultaneously. So in this video, we're going to talk about what both universal and client-side rendering are and how we can set up a Nuxt application for hybrid rendering. Now, before we jump in, if you are interested in improving your front-end skills, then be sure to check out an application called Web Dev Daily. It's a platform that offers daily coding challenges to complete within an innovative VS Code-like browser IDE. In addition to improving your coding skills, once you complete a challenge, it will then be added to your profile, which can act as a portfolio that you can share to show off your front-end skills. And you're also able to learn from other developers by checking out their solutions as well. Now, if you want to acquire hands-on experience and practice like a professional developer would, we recently launched projects. These projects are going to put you in the world of a professional developer, equipping you with detailed Figma designs and a series of well-structured tasks to complete. So if you are interested in improving your front-end skills, then be sure to click on the link down below in the description. It's free to sign up. All right, so let's first talk about what the difference is between client-side and server-side rendering. Now, client-side rendering looks a little bit something like this. So say, for example, we make our initial web request to our application. So we're going to make a request to the server, and the server is going to send us back a couple of things. Now, the first thing it's going to send back to us is an empty HTML document, which the browser is going to download. Now, we're also going to get back a JavaScript bundle, which the browser is going to download and then run. Now, once that has been completed, the application will now be rendered and interactive for us to use inside of the browser. And then any navigation that happens within our application is going to be handled on the client side, and this is also known as a single page application. Now, there are a few drawbacks with client side rendering, and first off, it's really bad for search engine optimization. Now, the reason why that is, is because if we take a look at our diagram here, when we make a web request to our application, the HTML document that we get back is empty. Now, the reason why that's a problem for search engines is because they make a request to your server and then they actually crawl that HTML document that gets rendered and since this is actually going to be empty, it's going to have nothing for them to actually crawl and then it's going to affect the SEO because essentially there's going to be nothing in there for them to index. And in addition to that, the user experience can also be affected since all the rendering is actually happening here inside of the browser and that can take some time to load. But after the initial request, then the user experience is actually really good when using client side rendering. Now let's take a look at what server side rendering is. So again, we're going to make a request to our server. However, this time, instead of getting sent back a empty HTML file, we're going to get sent back a fully rendered static HTML file that will be visible to us here inside of the browser. Now we're also going to get back a JavaScript bundle and this is going to download and run in the background and it's going to do something called hydration where it's going to implement all of use functionality into our application. Now once that hydration is complete, our application will become fully interactive. All right. And then what's really cool about how Vue handles things is that once that hydration is complete, then our application pretty much becomes a single page application where all the navigation within the application from here on out is going to happen on the client side or within the browser. And the method of doing this is called universal rendering where the initial page load is going to happen on the server side and then once the application has been hydrated then it's going to act like a traditional single page application. Now the benefits of actually using universal rendering are number one you're going to have better search engine optimization and the reason why that is is instead of being sent back an empty HTML file we're now going to have a fully rendered static HTML file so that the search engines have something to actually crawl. And then since the pages are being loaded on the server, we're going to see faster page loading times. Therefore, we're going to see an improvement to our user experience. Now, a question that I see quite commonly is which rendering mode should you be using for your applications? So client side rendering is going to be good for heavily interactive applications and things like dashboards, games, and even social media platforms. While universal rendering is versatile and can fit mainly any use case, it's really good for content driven applications and things like blogs, portfolios, and even e-commerce websites. Now, in some cases when building applications, you may want to take advantage of both client-side rendering and universal rendering within the same application. Now, say for example, we're building a blog. 
So all of our blog content would benefit from universal rendering to take advantage of search engine optimization where maybe our admin section acts more like a dynamic web application and would benefit more from client-side rendering. Now before the release of Nux 3, this actually wasn't possible to do, but now within Nux 3 we have the ability to do something called hybrid rendering. And what hybrid rendering allows you to do is the ability to choose what type of rendering mode that you want to use for certain parts of your application. So in this example here we could have all of our blog content universally rendered while we could have the admin section client side rendered. And this is really good because it gives us the ability to make our Nux application super versatile. So let's see how we can implement hybrid rendering into a Nux3 application. Alright, so here I have a fresh install of Nux3. The only thing I did add was a pages directory with some files here just for the sake of this demonstration, but that is about it. Now the first thing I want to show you is how we can actually change our whole entire application from either being universally rendered or client side rendered. So to do this you want to head to your Nux config. And then within here, you just want to define a property called SSR. Now, by default, this is set to true. So whenever you create a new Nux3 application, by default, it is going to be universally rendered. Now, if you want to convert this to be client-side rendered, all you want to do is pass the value of false for this. And now your whole entire Nux3 application is going to be client-side rendered. Now, if you want to take advantage of hybrid rendering within your Nuxter application, you can do so with another property we can define inside of our config called route rules. So let's remove this SSR property and let's define our new property of route rules. And as the name of this property suggests, it allows us to update the configuration for routes that we have within our application. So say for example, we head into our pages directory, you can see here all these routes that I went ahead and pre-created. Maybe we want to update our admin route from being server-side rendered to client-side rendered. So inside of our route rules, we just want to define the actual routes. We're gonna say slash admin, and then this accepts an object for additional properties we can configure for this particular route. And over here on the docs, they have an article about rendering modes, and within here they have a section on the route rules, and it goes ahead and lists all the different properties that you can use to configure your routes. And the one we're going to be looking at is called SSR, which accepts a Boolean value, and what this does is it disables server-side rendering for sections of our application, and it makes them into a single-page application only with the property of SSR, and we want to set this to false. And then back here inside of our Nux config, we just want to add the SSR property here and we want to set the value to false. And now our admin route is going to be client side rendered only. And here inside of our file, since it is now client side rendered, we have access to browser APIs like the window API and even local storage. And we no longer have to worry about server compatibility. Now, when you're building an application, it's very common that you're going to have something called dynamic pages. And an example that would be here inside of our pages directory, we have a folder called products. And then within here, we have a file that accepts an ID. And let's say, for example, we want to client side render all the products that we have here within our application. So to do this, what we want to do is you want to first say slash products like this. And then instead of just leaving it slash products, we want to append a trailing slash on here. And then we want to say double asterisk. And what this is going to do is target any route that matches this path that we have here as slash product. So for example, if we have slash product slash one, two, three, then this route rule is going to be applied. So what we want to do is do our colon and then our object. And we want to say SSR and we want to set this to false. And then all the products that match this path within our application, which we have it set up right here, are all going to be client side rendered. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for the video. Hopefully you found it helpful and you were able to learn something new. And if you are interested in learning more about Nux3, I am working on a Nux course that isn't out just quite yet. But if you do want to join the waitlist, you can head over to learnnux.dev. But anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.